So hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 8th of August and I'm currently sitting in a hotel room. So this is kind of a, a ghetto version, I guess, of the weekly update. I do have the chapters that will be in the description of the video. New videos this week, I dived into the new ability to convert the source of authority for groups from Active Directory to Entra. Now this is a huge capability when you wanna start moving the focus of your identity from your traditional on-premises AD into the cloud's entra, and then take advantage of the cloud capabilities like governance and dynamic groups and access reviews, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really a huge step. And then I looked at the new App Gateway for Containers Web Application Firewall compatibility and feature, which now removes one of the biggest blockers to moving from the original app gateway which was never really designed for containers to the written for container app gateway for containers okay so on to what's new on the compute side so the aks agentic cli is available in private preview right now but what this lets me do is i can use the az aks agent and it will bring up this agentic help allowing me to use natural language to primarily help with the diagnosis and resolution of your AKS cluster issues. In public preview, we now have AKS managed namespaces. So namespaces in Kubernetes lets us logically isolate workloads and resources within the cluster. I can assign certain amounts of resource, etc. So a managed namespace makes the Azure control plane aware of these namespaces and also apply a number of policies both to the networking and resource of my quotas. You can configure how they interact, how I can take over existing namespaces if I go to use a managed namespace and a regular Kubernetes namespace already exists. And then there are a number of Azure ARM roles to actually then go and assign various control and data plane activities. Then we have the AKS Virtual Network Verifier. This lets me detect and troubleshoot outbound connectivity issues in your AKS cluster in preview. Now what it's gonna do is run an analysis between your cluster and a public egress endpoint. So this would help me detect misconfigured networking around your NSGs, your firewalls, your user-defined routes, your VNet peering, your load balancers. I can also in preview have multiple standard load balancers now with my cluster. So what that lets me really do is move beyond the scale problems I had when I could only have one. So I can now have more than 300 inbound rules and I can have more than eight private link services because I can distribute those workloads over different load balancers. The managed Prometheus now has an increased ingestion quota in preview. So remember, when I use managed Prometheus, it uses a special type of workspace in Azure Monitor, and there's just a limit for the ingestion rate. Well, I can now request to have this increased to up to 20 million events per minute. This is gonna be useful for your busier clusters. And the AKS local DNS, uh, which is available in preview, so that's a DNS proxy. So it's gonna run on every node. And when it's deployed, it's invisible to the application, but it's gonna cache DNS lookups. And that means it's also then gonna be able to perform resolution from that cache based on a configurable time to live. So then for your pods, it will give you a faster DNS lookup and it removes load on the regular core DNS service because it's gonna get less requests because they're often being served by that cache. But the other benefit here is if the regular DNS is unavailable, well, as long as it's had that DNS lookup within the time to live, those DNS requests will continue to be resolved from the cache, so it adds resiliency. I can now use Azure Bastion with the AKS CLI in preview. Azure Bastion, remember, is a managed jump box experience, and that works for RDP, it works for SSH, there's different tiers available it has Entra integrated authentication. Well, now I can use it to access both my private and public AKS clusters just using the native Kubernetes tooling, i.e. kubectl. So I can use AZ AKS Bastion 
and the various details about the cluster, etc. But I'll then be connected into a CLI to use those uh, Kubernetes commands. The AKS MCP server is now available in preview. So remember, model context protocol is just a standard way for AI applications to talk to other knowledge, other tools, but also explain to the language model what those capabilities are. So the language model can ask the AI app to go and, hey, ask it to do this thing on my behalf. So AKS now has an MCP server. Well, that's going to let my AI application easily integrate with my AKS clusters. So, hey, go and create a cluster, go and scale a cluster, go and give me metrics and logs from that cluster. There are some AKS control plane improvements available in GA. So this is for AKS Kubernetes 1.31.9 and higher. And it has something called streaming encoding for list responses. And it's going to give you a huge, I think it's a 10x times reduction in the amount of server memory used for large list calls. Now, what you have to think about is, obviously, you can have massive numbers of objects and resources in Kubernetes. And if I perform one of these list operations, the server has to allocate enough memory to collect the complete response and keep it in memory and allocate that memory until the client reads the whole response. Now, that could be gigabytes of memory. So what this streaming ability does is the encoder will now process each of the objects individually, stream them to the client, which means it doesn't have to hold all of it in memory. So that's a massive memory saving. Now, because it's now streaming it, it may increase the CPU use slightly. So there's a potential trade-off that you will consider. The AKS security dashboard is GA, and that's just a central view for the security posture and runtime threat protection for your AKS clusters. I can also perform actions like enabling Defender for containers, and I'll see recommendations for any misconfigurations, which I can even assign to people. And then the AKS static public prefix egress gateway has gone GA. So that lets me have particular annotated pods Route, bound, route their outbound traffic through a static public IP prefix, i.e. a set of IP addresses. And why that's useful is if they're talking to something out on the internet that may be allow lists only from certain sources, well, now you can go ahead and control what that source actually is. Still more compute and still more AKS. Uh, AKS now has deployment safeguards. So this basically lets me configure some... Um, best practices that are going to be enforced that will then warn you if it's non-compliant or even block them. And I can enable this on existing clusters. Uh, it's going to be on by default for AKS Automatic, um, but I can disable it at a namespace level if required. AKS Azure Linux and Ubuntu 24.04 now supports confidential VMs, which are that AMD whole VM encryption and just protects while it's in use. So before we've got um, sort of encryption in transit, encryption at rest, now this is encryption in use. AKS Advanced Container Networking Layer 7 policies are available in GA. So this is part of the Advanced Container Network Services and Cilium clusters. So it gives me fine-grained inspection and control over app traffic. And AKS can now use the NFS encryption for Azure files based NFS shares. Because what happens is when I want to use the NFS encryption for Azure files, it has a client component, AZ NFS. And that's what enables the encryption in a tunnel using TLS. Well, the AKS nodes will now support that and is adding the particular client component required for you. Uh, AKS disable HTTP proxy is in preview, so I can disable the HTTP proxy feature on an existing AKS cluster since it's enabled by default. And now the EV6 series virtual machines, so remember the E series is the memory optimized, a larger ratio of memory per virtual CPU, well now has 128 and 192 virtual CPU sizes. V6 also has Azure Boost, which gives me big storage and network throughput performance. It uses Intel TME for system memory data protection. It's got NVMe um, for higher throughput. So now I can actually get up to 1,832 gigabytes of RAM. 
on the networking. So Azure DNS DNSSEC is now available in the US Gov and the China clouds. So DNSSEC, which are the security extensions, is to provide cryptographic authentication, a proof for the authenticity of the records. So this will stop a bad actor getting in the middle of a DNS client and what is the true DNS server to spoof records or poison the DNS cache. Records are now signed and the client can validate that signature against the public key that will be published on the source DNS server, which again has a certain chain of trust. Um, Azure Virtual Network Manager supports up to 5,000 virtual networks in a mesh. So Azure Virtual Network Manager provides features like traffic flow control, routing, IP address management, but also connectivity. One of those connectivity options is the mesh. And that gives complete connectivity between everything in the mesh without using traditional peering. It's bi-directional. And I'll often actually use this even if I still have a hub, but I want the spokes to talk to each other directly and not go via the hub. So now I can have up to 5,000 virtual networks in that mesh. Security Network Perimeter has gone GA. I did a separate video on this, but it's all about PaaS resources that don't live within a virtual network. Well, I can place them together in a network security perimeter and they'll all be able to talk to each other. But I can then also define as a set other resources that they can talk to and that can talk to it. So this will help um, reduce things like data exfiltration. And App Gateway for containers now has web application firewalls. That should be AGC, not AGW. Uh, I did a whole video on that. Basically, now I can have the web application firewall in front of App Gateway for containers. On the storage side, so Azure File Sync now has an Azure Arc extension in GA. So Azure File Sync gives me synchronization between N number, so many Windows file servers, and a cloud endpoint, which will be an Azure file share. And it synchronizes the content via that file share. The local servers can tear content off of their local storage just to the cloud endpoint to save space locally. Well, now with the Azure Arc extensibility, remember Azure Arc just extends the Azure control plane to non-Azure resources like on-premises uh, server operating systems to Kubernetes clusters. Well, I can deploy the Azure File Sync agent from the Azure portal, the PowerShell to CLI, by just adding the Azure File Sync agent extension from the install extension experience of Azure Arc. I just need the server Azure Arc enabled, uh, onboarded, and then, hey, I can deploy it as long as it's Windows Server 2012 R2 or later. Uh, the Azure Databox next gen, which I did a whole video about, it's the new form factor with 120 and 525 terabyte versions. Super fast data transfer ships next day. It was now available in many, many more regions. And it has cross-region kind of copy at no extra cost. Azure storage actions are available in more regions. These give you very rich granular capabilities to perform actions on your storage accounts that go way beyond the free Azure lifecycle management. I can do things like um, blob, data lake, I can do huge scale, I can do complex sets of criteria, I can set immutability, data protection, undelete. So this is now available in 22 more regions if I have data residency requirements. Azure Storage Discovery is now available in preview. This is all about performing analysis at scale. So what is the use capacity? What is the activity? What are my usage patterns? How can I optimize my cost? Now, it's both a free and a standard offering. Now, the free offering gives basic insights related to capacity. So for the capacity, stop top storage accounts, uh, trends, where the standard builds on that to also give additional insights into areas such as transactions and, and other and configuration insights. Um, the standard will start billing October 1st. It will have up to 18 months of insight retention for standard or 15 days for free. And it will integrate with Azure Copilot for natural language interactions. And it can cover many, many different storage accounts over many different subscriptions. They just have to be in the same tenant. Miscellaneous. So GPT-5, I'm obviously sure you heard about this, but GPT-5 is now available in Azure AI Foundry. 
It's available in the GitHub uh, Models Playground, the GitHub API. It's available in four different versions in Foundry. There's the regular GPT-5, which is designed for logic and multi-step tasks, 272,000 token context, huge leaps in reasoning and coding. There's a GPT-5 Mini, which is a lighter weight, lighter weight version for cost-sensitive apps. GPT-5 Nano, really optimized for very fast speed, low latency, uh, good for Q&A. There's GPT-5 Chat for advanced, natural, multimodal, context-aware conversations, up to 128,000 model context. And what's going to happen with GPT-5 is you, you can just give it the request and it will actually work out the right path to take for the right level of response given how complicated it is. They're retiring pretty much all of their older models, they being OpenAI, because of the flexibility of GPT-5. So yeah, I can use Foundry, I can use the GitHub models Payground, I can use GitHub API. It's also going to show up in Microsoft Copilot as an option. It's showing up in M365. In Copilot, there's a new smart mode, which will go and use GPT-5. Uh, GPT Image 1 has had an update. This is for image generation. And basically, I have better control over the fidelity based on the source materials. If I had a photograph, a picture, I want to make sure I maintain my brand identity, for example. Well, I can set the fidelity to make sure it maintains those logos or whatever that might be. And it can also start to stream partial images. GPT also has an open source version that is both 120 billion and 20 billion parameter versions. And so these are available in Foundry as well and Foundry Local. So that smaller 20 billion I could run on my local machine. And open source just means the weights. And remember, we always talk about parameters and they are the weights and biases of each of the neurons that make up the neural network. And that's the magic. All of the training is all about fine tuning those weights. So with open source, those weights are available and public. So you can now maybe go and learn certain things, you can go and fine tune, you can experiment. So the 120 billion is pretty much on parity with the OpenAI 04 Mini on core reasoning. You need an 80 gigabyte GPU to run that, but a 20 billion one is fantastic for agentic AI tasks, code execution, um, tool use, and I can run that on a GPU that only has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And they're all compatible with the OpenAI Responses API. Azure Backup now has multi-disk agentless crash consistent backup. So I can take a backup without any software installed in the guest OS and the backup will have all of the disk captured at the exact same moment in time. It is not app consistent. It is not telling the OS that backup's happening. The OS therefore can't tell apps to flush everything out the disk to quiesce, pause any changes until the snapshot is taken. So it's just like you turn the power off but all of the disks will look like the power was turned off at the same moment in time. And I can use this by setting the consistency type as part of my enhanced VM backup policy to only crash consistent snapshot. And then finally, the AI shell now has MCP support. So the Azure AI shell provides a shell experience that I can leverage language models in. So I can have those natural language chats as part of PowerShell or as a standalone experience. Well, now it acts as an MCP client, which means I can, via a, a configuration file, tell it a number of MCP servers to add knowledge, to add tools to my shell experience. And that was it. Uh, again, sorry that I can't be standing in front of it waving my hands around this week, but I'm sitting in a hotel room. Uh, but we will be back to normal very shortly. So until next week, everyone take care. Thank you.